Hello everybody, I'm Sophia Parola with the Garden State Film Festival and here with me are the people behind the making of Love Letters Profiles with Style. How are you guys? Good, good. How are you? Thanks for having us. Great. Thanks for having us. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for taking some time out to be here and for making this wonderful web series. Um, I'm really excited to get into the interview, but I'd love to ask you both to introduce yourselves and your part in the series. Ladies first. Thank you, Mike. Hi, I'm George Lennon and I play Peg in Love Letters Profiles. And I'm Mike Farraher and I am the writer and the producer of uh, Love Letters Profiles. I also am on for a hot minute as Mitch on camera. <laughs> and, uh, and the Love Letters Profiles is actually a, a dating profile writing business. It's an actual existing dating profile writing business of which some of these uh, series stories are based on actual real profiles that I've written. So it's really just a kick to just see this on screen and, and for the amazing life that Jerry breathes into it. It's been so much fun. So thanks for having us on again. Wow. I mean, this is why I love the interviews because I love hearing about the background of where people were inspired to make these these amazing pieces. So you just answered my first two questions. I was going to ask you to like give a little synopsis about it, which I think people got. And what was your inspiration for writing? So you, you are a writer in this, in this business. Yes, I am. So I, I write dating profiles. <laughs> I write dating profiles. I've been doing them on the back of napkins for years. And when the pandemic hit, I just decided to make a business out of it. So when I hung the shingle and put the website on, so to speak, um, I got these just range of people that came out of the woodwork and wanted a dating profile written and inside of those questionnaires and interviewing people I just got so much character ideas so many character ideas out of this that it was just too good to pass up so the vision that I have I actually vision this as a, as a dramedy sitcom where you would follow the date from the time the profile was written up until the first date that would be one storyline and then the other storyline would would chronicle the dating profile writer and having him deal with some of the marital troubles he has his home so he's getting he's having all these women find love outside of his own home but inside of his own home he's actually struggling with his marriage and and will they make it and will they persevere so those are kind of like the dual storylines that I kind of envision, um, you know, if this does see the light of day and, and ends up on a, a streaming service. Wow, that is so unique and different. I really haven't seen anything like that. So this was the first and the only um, episode that you have produced of the series? It's the only one I've produced. I've, uh, yeah, I, I've actually have uh, six other episodes that I've sort of sketched out. So I'm ready to go with those. And uh and I have to just say from the very outset, there is no better audience. There's no better laugh track. There's no better creative partner than Jared Glennon. She Aww. is such an amazing person to bounce ideas off of. We did another um, TV pilot concept called McLean Avenue. She's also starred in my one act plays that I've done off Broadway at the Manhattan Repertory Theater. So um, we have a, a, a deep, long friendship and creative partnership that uh, made this yet again a joy to work to be part of because of Jer. Wow. Thank you, Mike. No, amazing partnership. And Jer, I mean, your performance was beautiful. I would love to ask you, what was it like developing Colleen, if you guys were collaborative in developing this character? And um, yeah, tell me about your experience acting in this. Yeah, well, like Mike said, um, in McLean Avenue, it's the same character. And she developed, uh, me and Mike developed her through another play. Um, and the whole idea of playing a woman in her older years, now discovering um, a newfound sexuality was so interesting for me. And um, she is a character that is very close to my heart. I, I, she's an Irish mammy. I have an Irish mammy. I am an Irish mammy. And um, she was, she, her backstory is she devoted all of her life to her son, who she affectionately calls her Fecker, and her husband. And the husband was a drinker and in the end left her. So all her life was devoted to her family. And now at this stage in her life, I, she's, she's a lot, of, she's a couple of years older than I am. Um, 
she's finding this newfound sexuality that she, in her wildest dreams never thought she would be doing. She just finds herself all of a sudden alone. And in this day and age, the way to get out in the dating scene is online dating. And um, like I said, there's so many layers and she to, to have this woman step out of her comfort zone in this in this arena is 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 amazing to play i love her i just i find so many layers to her and she she i she she's she's serious but there is a there's a comedic side to her and you know she sees she sees everything straight and narrow and um that and she and she she's a very genuine character she she's just you know like i just love her i love playing her that's beautiful. She absolutely is genuine. And uh, you can tell how connected you are to her. And you feel that watching this series. Oh, thank you. So, um, Mike, I mean, you said that you created a lot of these stories from what you experienced and what you've written in this business. So tell me, how do you choose which story? Like, what made you want to talk about Colleen and this story um, first, based off of everything that you've heard? Yeah, I well, this was a pretty... I almost don't want to answer your question because I don't want to give it away, right? Oh, right. But, uh, but it was <laughs> it was definitely there was definitely a twist in um, a one word that was in the dating profile, and it was one of those words that the one person made it mean one thing and the other person made mm -hmm. it mean another, and then there's a collision course of the date. Like you're you're almost like I, I can even actually see people when they're watching. They go, oh no. This is what's gonna happen. They don't even want to look, you know. It, yes, and it's a little cringe worthy, a little bit, uh, but it's the comedy and the cringe that's yeah. super funny. So um, I just, I just envisioned that. And John Heron, who is the other actor, and John Sabia, who's the director. You know, it's what I really love about uh, this creative process. Unlike the novel writing that I'm doing, is that you know I will write it. I'll put something on the page. And then, you know, Jer and John and John Sabia, the director, will see things that I won't see and they'll just take it into other areas that, you know, I, I almost am embarrassed to say that I wrote it because the truth of the matter is, is that I, I, I did a skeleton of it, but these folks just took it and made it into their own and um, made, made it funnier than I thought that I, I could put it on the page. And, you know, Jer is, I, I, you know, hand to God, I just think Jer is, you know, Lucille Ball funny. She'll just, <laughs> she'll just, you know, really no kidding. She will go for the throat to get the laugh. And that's something you just can't buy. So she brings the authenticity of the Irish mammy characters that I grew up with. My mother's Irish, but then she just has this comedic timing. And really, like I said, like Lucille Ball will do anything for a laugh and go for the jugular for the laugh. And it's just super fun. It's also like um, you, the, 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 the true line is you can't judge a book by its cover. And it's, it's important. Like when we, like Mike said, when we were uh, at rehearsals and we did a lot of it over zoom because we, we filmed it in the, in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of rehearsal on zoom and we discovered a lot of things just like we're, you know, like we're talking and, um, the, it's like you can't judge a book by your by its cover and and that no matter what love is love and when when she met uh, Pat she knew she like she knew there was something so familiar about Pat but she couldn't quite put her finger on it and to again the layers and to discover you know I know you from somewhere you know it, it, it's you you never should judge a book by its cover and you and if you don't you'll see what happens and you know, the relationship you will develop with someone. Absolutely. Such beautiful topics in this series that are, goes so much beyond than what yes. you're just hearing and seeing. Exactly. Um, and as you just mentioned, you filmed this during the pandemic, which I love that you incorporated something so relevant that we're on right now, like Zoom. Tell me about <laughs> what that was like filming during the pandemic, um, how you guys incorporate, did you just record like what I'm doing right now? Like what was, what was filming this like? Yeah, well, it's, it really started off from the table reads so that those were all done on Zoom, as Jara said, and, you know, they were some of them, as, as is often the case with Jara and I, you know, it's like an adult diaper requisite moment because we'd be like on, <laughs> we'd like wet our pants laughing at this, you know what I mean? Like, it would be so funny. <laughs> and then, you know, we transfer that into the page and, and then uh, John, I really have to give the credit to John Sabia, our director, because what 
we wanted to do is we wanted to do live action, but then have the Zoom experience, which we're all used to. Hello, we're doing that now. This is how we're connected now. So to have that graphic in such a way that you mixed both so that it didn't feel like you're on another Zoom call. Do you know what I mean? So we wanted to do that in such a way where it was both live action and Zoom. So it just wasn't a Zoom-based movie. And there's, there's some Zoom-based yeah. movies out there which are great, but we really wanted to do something different. And um, we were able to do this in just a couple, like really a day and a half. And wow. just really everybody came prepared. They knew their lines. They, they were crafting the characters late into the night the night before. And uh, I really loved that technical part of it, which was very much John Sabia's vision for sure. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, talking about the pandemic and everything, especially artists are very affected, not only with budget and the concerns that you have with filming. Jer, how do you continue to stay such a phenomenal actress and stay creative and on your feet um, during this pandemic? And how did that apply to filming this? Yeah, well, I, I, I write a lot myself as well. And um, I'm always this particular character during the pandemic. I'm, I was isolated with my my youngest son, James, and uh, every so often I would write a skit with this character. And wow. uh, my, my, yeah, yeah. And the state with, with like all the situations she gets up to being in isolation with her fecker. And um, so me and James did, I think five or six skits and I put them up on Facebook and Mike saw them and there was, you know, it was all connected with this character. I write a lot as well. And then like Mike said, me and Mike would get together any given night and either Zoom or call and we, you know, just create, create, create and talk and talk. And like he said, we'd, la we'd be crying from laughing. So you just, and you do, you just have to keep active. You know, you, yeah. you just have to. And then when we, when we got a date to do it, we all, you know, just said, let's do it. And I said that to Mike, we all had the same vision. We all had the same dream and we all had the same passion. So we literally did this in a day and a half. I went out the night before it was filmed in New Jersey. I went out the night before and we were up at the crack of dawn on Sunday and we went right through. But like Mike said, we were all dedicated. And, you know, this saying uh, teamwork makes the dream work. And uh, that you just if you if I always say love what you do and do what you love. And that's what we did. That's what love letters really is. It's a, it yeah. is a genuine love letter. <laughs> and, and, you know, and again, so I also, uh, I want to give credit where credit is due. So along with Jer, who, uh, you know, wouldn't have been made without her. I think John Heron and, J and Jer would go off on their own without yeah. me. And they, and like line by line and go, yeah, I don't think that, mm, yeah. that wouldn't work. You know, so there was a lot of that going on behind yeah, Not we had to develop. Back, but, but it, but it was, you know, <laughs> yeah, <up> oops. <laughs> behind my back, but but what, what but what I think you know what I think is important to know as well is that um, well, how I typically work is that I expect you to learn your lines, and we'll do one take when you do your lines. But then with what they came to the party, if they could come up with something yeah. better than what was on the paper, then let's do it, and we'll fix it in post, and we'll figure out what the best version is. So. Um, I think that they really poured their heart and their creativity and their brain power into it. And it was extremely gratifying. Yeah. And I also have to give credit to Mike because Mike like would give us the script and he gave us the freedom to explore in the way we wanted to. He, he'd give us his ideas too, or we'd know, you know, but Mike and John, our director trusted me and John. And that's a huge thing for an act, an actor to have the trust of the writer, the director. And I got to give Mike credit. He, I've worked with Mike numerous plays and and this is our second t uh, tv series and mike just is like trust me and and vice versa and i think that's so important you know there's no egos you you check your ego there's no we're, we are all like i said we're all in it for the same reason to do to tell a story and i think that definitely added to the beautiful chemistry between you and and the character pat it really yes. it, you could see all of that so just to wrap up this interview, um, you said that you filmed this in Jersey, which I love to hear. Um, so <laughs> tell me, is that one of the reasons why you wanted to submit to Garden State Film Festival? What, how does it feel to have um, love letters, profiles, accepted into this festival? What do you hope audiences get out of it? Well, I hope, I hope, I, I really think um, Hollywood's coming to us in Jersey. You know, there's, 
There's the rumors about Netflix that might be taking over Fort Monmouth. Yes. I know there's some Hollywood producers and writers that are here now. So I think the Garden State Film Festival really harnesses those, the, the things that are already existing here. There's a place, a gathering place for people to network and exchange ideas. So I, I, I can't tell you how, what a thrill it is yeah. to be in the Garden State Film Festival. It's amazing. Uh, really. It really, really is amazing. And, you know, you look at the, the, the wingspan of it, right? Because you're, we're in like three or four different towns and you know, God bless you guys. First of all, I really wanted to say this. We only have a minute, I'm sure, but I really want to acknowledge everything you guys had to do to put this on because no kidding, as a filmmaker, it just gives us such a lift when we get ex accepted into it. So it really means the world. And, and for the networking of, of the burgeoning scene that's coming up in and around Asbury Park. Yeah, this is the place to be. So we're so grateful that we're here. Yeah. Wow, I love that. I mean, beautiful words. I know that the people in Garden State work so very hard and they will appreciate you saying that. 20th, it's the 20th anniversary. I'm so happy that this web series is here. I think that audiences should see it. I love the topics that you explore in this. And mm -hmm. let me tell everyone how they can watch this. It will be playing at the Jersey Shore Art Center Sunday, March 27th in the film block 12 to 2 p.m. Um, I'm guessing, Mike, you will be there. Jared, do we, are we gonna see you there? Yes, yes, I definitely, I wouldn't miss yeah. it. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, we're can't wait. The, we're going to the cocktail hour. The yeah, whole we're, doing, we're and, doing the whole thing. <laughs> and I, I hope I get to see you guys there. Yes, I, I'd, be talk to me. I'd be remiss if I didn't say, if anybody does need a dating profile written, <laughs> lovelettersprofiles.com, yes. it's a real thing. We know who to call. And I just that just makes this all the more better. I love how you came up with this. I love what you guys created. Congratulations again. And thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Our thank pleasure. You. Awesome. Really great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.